is Michelle from the Milton Public Library and I'm here today for another Teen Space episode. Today we're going to be baking soft pretzels and I don't know if you've ever had Auntie Anne's. They may not be quite as good as theirs but you know what? They're kind of fun to make. So join me as we start. I'm going to tell you first of all you're going to need six to eight cups of flour, just regular flour. Um, some sugar, half a cup of sugar, teaspoon, two, one or two teaspoons, two teaspoons salt. You'll need two packages of yeast. You'll need some eggs, two eggs, and you'll need a half a stick of butter. I, you may want more butter for another topping that we'll talk about as the, um, as we go on with the baking. So, and you'll need water. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to start warming my water. I don't when you are using yeast, you have to be careful how hot your temperature is of your water. So I'm going to gra warm it gradually so that it doesn't get too, too hot. And I'm going to do it in the microwave. So in order to do that, I'm going to start by using two cups of cold water. I want to make sure it's cold because otherwise it'll heat too quickly. Okay, make sure I have two cups. I have a little bit more than that, so I'm going to dump some out, probably. Okay, so now I'm going to dump my two cups of water into this microwave-safe bowl, and I'm going to put my softened butter. This should be softened, some, and it's a half a stick or a quarter of a cup. You can use margarine as well. I just prefer to use butter as what we have. And now I'm going to put this in the microwave, start to warm it gradually for 30 seconds. You want it to be about um, what you would use maybe in a shower or taking a bath. Maybe not if you're a real hot shower taker, don't go too hot, but um, something that would be comfortable. So we're gonna start that. While we're doing that, I'm going to take my flour. I'm gonna take all my dry ingredients and add them to this bowl. So we need six cups to start of the flour. I gotta count. Two, three, four, Five, six. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm getting flour all over the place. As I've said in the past, I'm not a very neat baker. So anyway, do not put your flour away because more than likely you're going to need some more. I'm going to put, I'm going to check my water to see how warm it is. Well, it's by no means warm enough, although it is warming. I'm going to put it in for another 30 seconds. And while that is heating, I am going to put in my sugar, and you need a half a cup of sugar. And that, you're done with for the moment. Put that away. Two teaspoons of salt. Sprinkle it in. And that too, we're done with for now. And I'm going to open up these two packages of yeast, and you need two packages that are 0.25 ounces, which is roughly, I think, two tablespoons per package, uh, two and a quarter, I'm sorry, teaspoons. So if, you're, if you have yeast that's not in packages like this, Put in about two and a quarter teaspoons um, for each package that you would be eliminating. I'm going to check my water again. Well, I think it could go one more time. So we're going to go another 30 seconds. I know this is not the most reliable way to heat the water. However, um, not everybody has a thermometer that they can use to check, check the temperature of their water. So, and I put the butter in there because it should soften a little bit more. 
I am now mixing up the dry ingredients that are in here, just mixing the yeast and stuff in. And then while this is continue, continuing to heat, I'm going to crack open one of the egg that we will be putting in the dough. Maybe, this is a tough egg. Okay, there is my egg. my hands. Oops. Okay, let's check our water again. I think maybe it could use a little bit more. So we're going to put it in for maybe another 15 seconds. There we go. Okay, so after the water is warm, we're going to pour that in here. We're going to mix it all up. And this is the, the part that gets a little bit tricky. So hang tight and I'll show you what we're going to do. I'm not checking it this time. As you can see, if you look at the top of that water, the butter is beginning to melt and um, it's beginning to you know, uh, move around on the surface. The butter should now be a little bit softer than it was, and I'm gonna just pour it right into my bowl. I'm going to do a little mixing of this before I add my egg. If my water was too hot, then it could actually start to cook my egg, and I don't want that to happen. You'll have to make sure that you get your butter mixed in with your dough. Make sure that it doesn't stay in a big chunk. And now I'm going to put my egg in. So there's my one egg. And you just start mixing up. I'm going to move this one, so it doesn't fall. So you're going to start mixing your batter. It is going to be quite sticky in the beginning. And one of the things that you're going to want to have to be sure is that when you're done, um, the mixing process that it is not sticky any longer. It should kind of come out to be the consistency of Play-Doh. That yolk is amazingly yellow. <laughs> Looks like I've put mustard in here. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna keep mixing this up. Now, when I said you needed six to eight cups of flour, the reason why I said six to eight, you'd think that this might be a little bit more precise, but the reason being that you have to make sure that your dough does not remain this sticky. I don't know if you can tell that this is super, super sticky, but if I put my hands in this right now, it is going to be all over my fingers. It's not going to come off at all. So I'm going to measure out another cup of this flour and I'm pretty certain I'm going to need the whole cup, but I'm not, this is a little bit more than a cup, but I'm going to kind of sprinkle it in gradually because this is when the dough gets quite stiff and it's harder to um, stir. So we'll do this a little bit at a time. So we're just gonna keep stirring this up. Remember, oops, remember playing with Play-Doh as a kid? Do you remember what the consistency was? I don't know about you, but I still like playing with Play-Doh. So my grandson loves to play with it. So we do quite frequently. And it's just kind of fun to make different things with it. So we're going to make pretzels with this dough. And just make sure all that flour is mixed in there. This is looking a little better, but I can guarantee you that it's still quite sticky. This is probably the hardest part of this whole project. So be patient. We're gonna put, I'm putting the rest of this one cup of flour in here. There's a good chance I'll have to add the other, or add more of another as well. Seriously, flowers flying all over the place. <laughs> okay, this is definitely getting better. In a little while, as I continue to add this flower to this 
batch, I am going to start kneading it with my hands. That'll give me a better clue as to how sticky it is. It's important that you get that flour mixed in because that's what's taking away the stickiness. So make sure you turn your dough frequently. This is getting much better. We're going to knead the dough anyway. So some of this flour that you see on the outside will get mixed in a little better as we knead it. But I think I'm going to put just a little more flour in. I'm going to measure out a whole cup, but I don't think I'll use it all. So I'm gonna put this much in. And I think now I'm going to take my, my scraper out and I'm gonna to try to use my hands. So I'm gonna take my dough, bring it back and push it forward with the, palm, the heel of my palm. So you just keep rolling it and pushing it until you mix that flour in. Obviously, you wanna make sure your hands are clean when you're cooking anyway. And I forgot to say that at the beginning, so make sure that your hands are always clean, but particularly when you're handling the, handling the food directly. So keep kneading that dough and making sure, see this loose flour on the bottom of the bowl, make sure that you get that all mixed in there too. This might be easier on a cutting board, but I wanna make sure that all this flour gets put in here, so. Okay, I think we're doing pretty well. If I were to sink my fingers in here, it's still maybe a little bit sticky, but it's not too, too bad. Okay, we're looking pretty good. The other secret is after you um, let this, because this now has to be covered and sit for 10 minutes, when you get ready to roll these into the pretzels, um, you can use a little bit of flour on your hands as well to work that in. Okay, you see this right here where it's sticking on the bottom of the bowl? That indicates to me that I need just a little more flour. So, sorry for the delay, but this is how we learn. We gotta keep working it. You don't want it sticking to your bowl like that. It'll be too hard for you to handle. So just keep kneading it away. This is kind of like making bread. If you've ever made bread or watched anybody make bread, this is somewhat how they do it. One piece here that's attached to my thumb, okay. All right, this is better, much better. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let this dough, I'm gonna just put it in the bottom of the bowl, round it up a little bit, and I'm going to cover it with the cover to this bowl. If you don't have a cover that fits a bowl like this, then you can just take a dishcloth or dish towel and just cover the dough itself. And we're gonna let this sit for 10 minutes. It's just going to sit over there for 10 minutes. I'm going to set my timer. Okay, 10 minutes. So I'm going to wash my hands. This is, a, that's always something. <laughs> zillion times when I'm cooking. So anyway, we are done with this flour. I'm going to put that back in there. Put my cover back on, move it to the side. And I have flour all over my table. So I'm going to clean that up. At least a little bit. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare my cookie sheets 
cookie sheets that what what they're going to be baked on. So I have, oops, sorry, I have um, I have three cookie sheets here because these this batch actually makes 32 at least 32 pretzels. So that's quite a lot. I don't like to bake anything in my oven more than one sheet at a time, especially mine at home. So I won't do anything differently here. So what I will do now is I'm going to take some shortening, just some Crisco or, or Hanford brand, whatever you get, and we're going to grease our cookie sheets. And they don't have to be heavily greased, just lightly greased. There's one, I am pretty certain we'll need all three of them. So I'm going to grease all three. We will not bake all three in this segment, but I am gonna show you that you will probably more than likely need three. So I'm going to do those two and I'll leave this other one for later. All right. So now that that is done, there are some toppings that we um, will be using, uh, and you'll have a choice of what you want to use. So one of the toppings that um, you will be able to use, well, the one, the one topping you will absolutely have to use is um, a, an egg and butter, or an egg and water mix. So I am going to take my egg and I'm gonna show you how to separate out your yolk because you only use the yolk. So again, um, I have my cup. I always break an egg in a cup before I put it in whatever I'm baking, simply because sometimes you'll get shells in there. So, and in this case, I do not want the white in with my yolk. So I'm going to break it over, over the cup for sure. And I'm going to separate it out. And as I move my yolk back and forth between the shells themselves, the white kind of slips out from between. Oops, I've broken my yolk. So I'm going to take my bowl and dump this part of the yolk in. Whoops, don't want that shell. And then I don't think I can get the rest of that yolk. But anyway, so that's how you do it. Another way is to slip it through your fingers. Just put your put the yolk, the egg in your fingers and let the, the white slip through. But keep them separate. And then after um, you've got your yolk separated, you're going to add, let's see. Two tablespoons of water. So two tablespoons of water to your egg mix. And one, there's two. Okay, and then I'm going to take a fork. And I'm just gonna mix this up. We're gonna leave this set aside for now because these, this will be put on the top of each pretzel after we form it. So this is going over here. And the next thing I'm going to do, first of all, one of the other things that you can actually top your pretzel with after you put your egg wash on is some coarse salt. And I don't know if you've ever seen coarse salt. Let me show you some. It's definitely coarser than the table salt you put on your food. Uh -huh. Can't get my cover off. There we go. I'll sprinkle some in the top of this and maybe you'll be able to tell. It's very definitely um, chunkier, bigger chunks. So the recipe calls for coarse salt. If you don't have it, I'm sure you can get along without it, but I'm gonna put that back in here. You'll need some of that. Um, some of the other ideas that we've come up with that we thought would be good is a mixture of 
sugar and uh, cinnamon. I already put it here. Okay, so what I'm going to recommend for a mixture of sugar and cinnamon, because we did not do all of our pretzels um, with sugar and cinnamon, we only did part of them. I'm going to suggest a couple of tablespoons of the white granulated sugar. And that will cover quite a few. And, whoops, what am I doing? And then a half a teaspoon of cinnamon to go in there. If you really like cinnamon, put a little bit more in. The real, it's really a um, preference for taste. So we're gonna mix that all up together. That'll be another possibility of sprinkling on the top of our pretzels. So that's ready when we finally get our pretzels made. And the last combination that you can do is to melt some butter and put some garlic powder in. So I have another bowl and I need my garlic. I'm going to take this is a partial stick of butter. And I think I've told you before that there are measurements on the packaging. So this one's been used for something already, but I'm taking about a tablespoon and a half, perhaps, maybe a little bit more. Maybe two tablespoons would be okay. I just don't want it wasted. And then I would put in, um, I, would probably put in a, a good heaping teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon of, of garlic powder. And again, if you really like the taste of garlic, go a little heavy. If you don't, go lighter. This I will melt in a little bit. It's too soon to do right now. So anyway, so those are some combinations of things that you can place on top of your pretzels once you have formed them. And I think now we're just waiting for our 10 minutes to be up. So hang tight. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes and it's time to see what's happened to our pretzels, our dough. Our dough hasn't really looked like it's changed too much. Sometimes because of the yeast, it could rise a little bit and it might have a little bit. But now I'm going to take, I'm gonna use a pair of scissors because I just think it's easier. I'm going to cut this dough in half so I'm just going to take half of this, whoa, it's thick. Maybe it did rise quite a lot. Um, I'm going to take half of this dough because we're going to work one half of the dough at a time. So that's probably not half, but close enough. We're going, I'm gonna cover this and I'm gonna let it sit back over here while I'm working with this section. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of flatten this out so that it creates a rectangle because you should kind of make your pretzels evenly sized. Although again, they don't have to be perfect. Some of that mine that I've made were not at all the same size as others, but I want them to be somewhat similar in size so that they'll bake it evenly at the same time. So then you've got your half, half of your dough spread out and then I'm going to cut it in half again like this and then I'm going to cut it into eight sections each half. So you should have 16 sections of dough cut. I can feel that this is still a little sticky, so I'm probably gonna use some flour when I'm rolling these, but one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, okay, I'm gonna do the same here. Make 
make sure they kind of stay separate from each other and they're wanting to funny thing about dough is sometimes when you start to stretch it out it tends to cling back on itself which is quite funny but you don't want them to do that Two, three, four, five, six. See, I'm gonna get more out of this one. Go figure. All right, so there you have it. Now you're ready to make your pretzels. Okay, so now I've started rolling my pretzels, as you can see on the pan. And I'm gonna show you how I did it. Just like Play-Doh, making a snake. Remember making a snake with Play-Doh? You just kind of roll it in, your, in, your, in between your hands. You have to shift it a little bit. And obviously my pretzels are not uniform by any means, but you know, it doesn't matter because they're going to be tasty anyway. So they say about 20 inches. This is by no means 20 inches, but you can stretch it a little, little bit as you do this. So I kind of make a U shape as I place it on my cookie sheet and then I twist it twice and then I put it down and then I just shape it into a better pretzel. Just like that. And we'll do another one. This is the fun part, honestly. This one's gonna be really thick because as you can see, I did not divide my dough as evenly as it's recommended, but it'll be okay. So I'm stretching it a little bit, making a U shape, crossing my ends twice, and then placing them on the, on the lower side of the, pre the U and just shaping out my, the tops a little bit more. And I have one more we'll do on this sheet. And then I'll show you what you can do with the toppings. And again, if your dough is a little bit sticky at this point, if you wanna put just a little bit of flour on your hands, um, you can do that and it'll take the stickiness out. So again, the U shape, cross them over, twist them, place the ends down on the lower part of the U and just spread them out a little bit. So you get your actual pretzel shape. So there you have it. That's what your pretzel should look like. Now we're going to uh, put the topping on these. And this again is the yolk and water combination that we mixed while we were waiting for our dough to rise. So what you're going to do, if you have a brush, this works really well. You can use a spoon and um, I would, I will show you when I do the um, butter and garlic combination, how you can use a spoon. But for now, before I start the butter, um, the yolk and water combination, or fat wash on the pretzels, I'm going to warm this. Okay, so I'm gonna use this brush, like I said, because it'll be quicker, but a spoon, the back of a spoon will work, and you're just going to brush the top of the pretzels with the egg wash. Then you'll decide what you wanna do with your toppings. If you wanna do all the flavors that I've shown you today, you can do that. You can also do just a sesame seed topping, or you could do, I don't know if you've ever had everything bagels, but I know that they sell those, um, those seasonings now in different markets, and you might be able to, you could do that on top of the pretzels. I'm sure that they would be absolutely scrumptious. These will remind you more of bagels than your crunchy typical pretzels. But like I said, if you've ever had Auntie Anne's, then you'll know what these will be similar to. Okay, so we've given the egg wash on each of those. As you can see, the egg did kind of go down on the cookie sheet. That'll cook off when you take your uh, pretzels off the cookie sheet. Um, likely they'll fall off. Okay, so I'm going to check my butter. Okay, this is not quite melted completely, but I think if I stir it up, 
it'll melt even more. So I'm going to do a few of my pretzels with the butter and garlic. And I'm gonna use the spoon like I said I would so that you can see what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna take the back of my spoon like this and coat it and I'm just gonna put some garlic and butter on a few of the pretzels. Just like that. Oh, this garlic smells amazing. These actually are my kids' favorite, this flavor. The second best flavor that they would tell you would be the cinnamon and sugar. So this is the cinnamon and sugar that we mixed earlier. And I'm going to do a few of those. Just sprinkle your sugar on the top. Okay, and then the last four, I'm going to um, use the coarse salt. And those, that again, I will just sprinkle some salt on each pretzel. You don't want to overdo it with the salt because this salt is a little more, what's the word, it's a little stronger in flavor than your typical table salt because you're getting such a big crystal of it. and it won't always stay real well in the pretzel anyway, so. But enough. Okay, so these now have to sit and wait for 20 minutes before you can bake them. So we're going to just put these aside. I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes, and then after the 10 minutes is up, that will remind me to, t to set my oven so that it'll start to heat. So right now, my timer is being set for 10 minutes. and then we'll come back and start the timer. So my prepared pretzels have been 10 minutes already. And like I said, I was going to set the timer for 10 minutes to remind myself to set the oven temperature. So now I'm going to start my t the temperature on the oven, which should be 400 degrees. And then probably by the time the oven warms up, it'll be just about 20 minutes so we can bake our first batch of pretzels. Okay, so our oven is now ready, preheated to 400. We're going to put these in there and bake them for 15 minutes. They should be golden brown um, as they bake and they'll definitely rise a little bit more. So let's put them in. Set the timer for 15 minutes and let them go. All right, so this is our last batch of pretzels and I'm going to tell you that the best thing to do is take them right off the cookie sheet when they come out of the oven so that they don't continue to cook um, on the cookie sheet because of the heat of the cookie sheet, they can continue to cook. So these are the last of them. They look pretty scrumptious and they rise considerably in the oven as well. So. Anyway, these are the last of the garlic and butter ones. And we have the rest of them that we've made here. So they look pretty good. If you wanted to um, warm your pretzel up, I think a really good way to do it perhaps would be in a toaster oven. You could sprinkle a little cheese on top. It would be kind of like a breadstick. Um, other than that, they're really fun to do and I hope you try them. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I hope that when you try them, yours come out as scrumptious as these are. So I hope you're taking care of yourself. Keep your hands clean, wear your masks, keep your distance and stay safe. See you soon. Bye-bye.